It's been almost two years since our last trip out into the backcountry. Life got in the way, so creating and adventuring took a backseat for a while. We took some time to get back on our feet, and we are glad to finally be back to hauling ourselves and our cameras into remote places again. Traveling by water has always been something we've been intrigued by. I grew up steps away from the ocean and was raised on boats and surfboards. We've done miles of backpacking trails by foot, but for our first trip into the great outdoors in nearly two years, we wanted to try a new kind of adventure. We chose the St. Regis Canoe Area of the Adirondack Park in upstate New York for its calm waters, accessibility, and the perfect fall weather conditions this time of year. The Adirondack Park is the largest publicly protected area in the contiguous United States. The park's boundary is known as the Blue Line, and it contains over 6 million acres of land, 3,000 lakes, and more than 30,000 miles of waterway. These waters have been traveled by canoe for hundreds of years, first by native tribes and later by fur trappers, fishermen, and tourists. Canoe travel remains by far the best way to see and explore the park. I know, I'm filming you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go forward. I think you got enough forward now that if you'll, you'll lift the back. All right, all right. That was good. All right, give me one push. One, two, three. All right, I'm in.
Oh, that was interesting. This region contains a variety of habitats, hardwood and mixed forest to the north and to the south a vast freshwater wetland with some of the highest biodiversity in the world. Exploring the park one might assume that these lands have always appeared as they do now, but the reality is, is that nearly all of the Adirondacks is in recovery. What you see now is secondary growth that has taken place since the early 20th century after the protections were established. These forests were subjected to vast clear-cutting through the mid-1800s by the timber industry, leading to significant erosion, pollution, and wildfires. Iron mining, overfishing, and sport hunting also posed a major threat to the local wildlife before the park was officially established in 1892. The wetlands have made a great recovery in the last century. The beaver population alone has rebounded from near extinction in 1900 to well over 50,000 today, thanks to a conservation effort that took place in 1901. Four beavers from Yellowstone National Park were relocated to the Adirondacks. They are a valuable keystone species that supports the entire ecosystem. Their dam building filters water, traps sediments, and processes nutrients, and maintains the diverse floodplain that provides habitat for other wildlife. The park itself is a conservation experiment unlike any other in the U.S. The result is a unique combination of what they named forever wild public land and strictly regulated private land, including over a hundred small towns presided over by the Adirondack Park Agency.
It was much colder than we were anticipating, and strong winds on the water made our fly fishing plans impossible. We spent two nights in the shelter on a tiny island in the middle of Fallensby Pond. Although we were disappointed to be unable to fish, we fortunately avoided any rain, and we were enjoying our time unplugged. The Adirondack region draws an annual income of over $1 billion tourism dollars and provides nearly 30,000 jobs on top of the ecological services, like water filtration, that it provides. But places like this are worth protecting for more than the purposes of maintaining clean water and their socioeconomic benefit. Wild places connect us with a deeper part of ourselves that is equally wild.